Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and welcome back to Black American Lineage. Thank you for your support, and I hope your new year is going well. Thank you for the support of 2023, and thank you for your support in 2024. And thank you for asking for more videos. So today we're going to talk about a very touchy subject, and that is the subject of reparations. Now, when we talk about reparations, it raises the ire of many black people and many white people. They don't think we ought to say anything about reparations because we weren't slaves. Therefore, we don't deserve any reparations. Now, there is never any discussion about the collateral damage that was done to black people as a result of slavery. Slavery was devastating to black people. It actually wiped us out as a people, as an ethnic group. Our identity was lost, our culture was lost, language was lost, children were lost, family was lost. Now that's just the front end of it. And then the horrific journey across the Atlantic packed in those slave ships like sardines. That was collateral damage and we're not even in the United States yet. And then there was the horror of being on an auction block being sold to people that you don't know anything about having your wife, your children, your mom, your dad snatched away from you with these strangers that you had never laid eyes on before that looked like aliens to you. You never seen anybody with that kind of complexion, that kind of hair, that kind of smell. All of that was devastating to those African people. And then we had the whole idea of working for hundreds of years with no wages while white people were coming over here from Europe, taking land away from the indigenous people and giving all kinds of financial assistance to get their start in this new world. And that's just during slavery, not even talking about after slavery, about the wages that were lost during slavery to our ancestors who did all that work and never got paid. And there's no talk about repaying black people during the Jim Crow system when they were supposed to be sharecropping, except they never got their share of the crop, okay? Now, here is the bombshell. This is a real bombshell. After slavery ended and the enslaved people were freed, white people who owned slaves received reparations. Yes. They received reparations because they had lost their property. So black people were viewed as property. So the government of the United States paid them for their lost property. In the meantime, the formerly enslaved people got nothing. They were punished for being let out of bondage. And to this day, people are still angry at black people for being freed. They really believe they had a right to own other people. Now that lets you know something about the mentality of the people that we're dealing with. And the whole thing about Africans selling people, even though some did, it just doesn't work anymore. Because the reality is, if you are a moral human being, don't you have sense enough to know you shouldn't be going anywhere to buy people? Even if the other people are selling them, why are you over there buying people? Well, we know the answer because you had come over here and taken land from people and didn't know what to do with it. So you had to go somewhere and get somebody who knew how to build a civilization. But back to the topic at hand. Those slave masters, and I know it's enslaved, those slave masters got paid. They received reparations. When slave owners got reparations, this article comes from Tara W. Hunter of the New York Times, and it was written April 17, 2019. On April 16, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed a bill emancipating enslaved people in Washington, the end of a long struggle. But to ease slave owners' pain, the District of Columbia Emancipation Act paid those loyal to the Union up to $300 for every enslaved person free. And I took the liberty of looking up what $300 would be 
in today's market and it was about nine thousand dollars of the slave owners that stayed loyal to the government they were paid three hundred dollars per enslaved person okay that's right slave owners got reparations enslaved african americans got nothing for their generations of stolen bodies snatched children and expropriated labor other than their mere release from legal bondage the compensation clause is not likely to be celebrated today but as the debate about reparations for slavery intensifies it is important to remember that slave owners far more than enslaved people were always the primary beneficiaries of public largesse. And largesse simply means that the slave owners were always the beneficiaries of free money. The act is notable because it was the first time that the federal government authorized abolition of slavery, which hastened its demise in Virginia and Maryland as runaways from these states fled to Washington. It offered concrete proof to enslaved people and their allies that the federal government might facilitate the destruction of slavery everywhere, and it confirmed the worst fears of their foes about an interloping, tyrannical president. Abraham Lincoln, however, was anxious to preserve his fragile alliance with loyal slaveholders. He had advocated abolition of slavery in Washington in 1849 as a congressman to no avail. As president, he encouraged the border states to voluntarily end slavery. He chose Delaware as an ideal place to take the lead in late 1861, but it became clear that Union slave owners could not be so easily persuaded. This reinforced the need to make congressional emancipation conditioned on compensating them, which put abolitionists in a bind. There were slave owners who were friendly to the Union government and Abraham Lincoln, so he's paying them off like, I'm going to pay you for your enslaved people so you'll go along with ending slavery. They welcomed the end of slavery in the capital, but shaved at payments that validated the right to own property in the form of human beings. If compensation is to be given at all, the abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison said at the National Anti-Slavery Convention in Philadelphia in 1833, it should be given to the outraged and guiltless slaves and not to those who have plundered and abused them. The abolitionists, the people who were against slavery, say, no, we don't pay them. That makes it seem like what they're doing is right. But Lincoln was trying to save the Union. Lincoln was not necessarily a friend of black people. We claim him, some of us anyway, but he was just trying to do what was right for the country to save the Union. I'm skipping down to the fifth paragraph where the arrow is pointed. Lincoln appointed a board of commissioners to oversee the process of compensation headed by the North Carolina abolitionist and New York Times reporter Daniel Reeves Goodloe. The board reviewed more than a thousand slaveholders' petitions to claim more than 3,000 enslaved people close to the entirety of the dwindling population. Oh, wow! Most of the petitioners received the full amount allowed. The largest individual payout was $18,000 for 69 slaves. Mm -hmm. Now that's $18,000 in 1862. That's equivalent to $182,828.74 in today's market. So they got a pretty good penny for those 69 enslaved people. Although the District of Columbia Emancipation Act marked the only time the federal government would compensate slaveholders, there is a longer history of slave owners requesting and receiving indemnification for the loss of their chattel. So they have never stopped applying for compensation for the loss of those enslaved people. So when they start talking about, we don't deserve reparations, you could just tune that out. 
A few years ago, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, a professor at Stillman College was trying to get payment for the damage that was done to his family's property during the Civil War. Now that's how entitled they feel for being paid for something that happened so long ago, they say. Whenever black people talk about reparations, they talk about, oh, slavery happened so long ago and you weren't a slave. Well, the Civil War happened a long time ago too, and they've had plenty of time to repair whatever damage was done to their property in this 160 or 70 something years. We need to know their history for asking for and getting reparations because that's very hidden. They don't talk about the reparations they've asked for and gotten. But listen to this. Slave owners felt entitled to and often received compensation from local, colonial, and state legislatures, especially in times of crisis when enslaved women and men ran away, participated in rebellions, or were executed for crimes. During the American Revolution, owners asked to be compensated when Bond's people, enslaved people, had died while working in lead mines in Virginia, for example, and when they sided with the British and ran away. So see, they've been begging for reparations and getting reparations since the Revolutionary War. After the Revolution, as northern states carried out gradual emancipation plans, compensation was attractive to slave owners seeking to erase their financial burdens. The 1804 Gradual Abolition Act in New Jersey, for example, did not free anyone immediately. It allowed children of enslaved women to be treated as apprentices, slavery really by another name, until they reached a certain age and would be freed. The law included a clause that allowed slave owners to gain compensation by letting their bonds people go free and reclaiming them as bound out labor, which gave them access to state funds for their troubles. See, still trying to hustle money for the enslaved people. So they took the children of the enslaved people and claimed they were being apprentices, but still just naming it something else, but slavery just the same. And I'm sure they thought what they were doing was very clever, but the enslaved people knew what they were doing. And sadly, every stunt that these enslavers pulled to get money themselves worked. But whenever an effort was made to get money or compensation for the enslaved people, they failed. In a break from tradition in the 1850s, the abolitionist Elihu Burritt organized the National Compensated Emancipation Convention in Cleveland to advocate payments to slave owners as well as smaller sums to be paid to the people they had enslaved. Nothing came of this proposal, however. So they will give the slave owners a large compensation and the enslaved people a smaller compensation and they didn't even want to do that. Didn't even want to do that. To be sure, the major benefactors of slave owned reparations within the Atlantic slave system were Europeans. When England abolished slavery in its Caribbean colonies, it offered compensation to 46,000 slave owners at the cost of about 26.2 million pounds. Okay, so the slave owners in the Caribbean were compensated. France went further by penalizing Haiti for the revolution that abolished slavery in its former colony, Saint-Domingue. It levied a huge sum on the island, which crippled it in decades of debt. Haiti has never recovered from winning that war. Former slaves were forced to pay indemnities to former slave owners in exchange for official recognition as the first black independent nation state in the Western Hemisphere. The long and insistent coupling of compensation for slave owners with emancipation is useful for consideration in current debates about reparations for the descendants of the enslaved. 
Critics and skeptics are fond of saying that enslaved people should have asked for recompense back then. African Americans did precisely that. Going back to the colonial era, they petitioned for freedom dues. They sued the estates of former masters for their unrequited toil. And they asked for land to restart their lives as free men and women. Relatively few of those efforts were successful. So African Americans have been asking for reparations. An overwhelming majority of white people believed that slave owners, not enslaved African Americans, deserved recompense for the benevolence of manumission. The only reward that was widely supported was colonization, which was a trip back to Africa. The act allocated $100,000 for the voluntary removal of the newly freed people at $100 per person to go to Liberia or Haiti, which rarely happened. Preserving sacred property rights and moving the Negro problem offshore meant that there was no justice for enslaved African Americans all of the candidates running for president must support the government's issuing of reparations to African Americans who were economically affected by slavery. Justice required this, and that's what, the, that's what this writer is saying, that the candidates running for president must support reparations, which we know at the present time they do not. What we need to understand as black American descendants of slavery, the people who were holding our people in slavery got compensation after compensation after compensation for losing the enslaved people who were working for them. They didn't want to go to work for themselves, so the government gave them money to keep them propped up. Okay, y'all, so thank you for listening. This video was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but thank you for listening, and please continue to support the channel, and as always, have a great day.